Dare I cross this bridge now for real reels this time? For real real, no fake, no lie. Uh, it tells me to constrain my wanderlust, but I've hit like a dead end on many things. The radio relay hums with electricity. Traffic beyond the gate. More abandoned motor, lo motor lorries. Ah. The sign says no entry. Someone scribbled an inverted star on it. You say no entry, but how no entry? Ooh. <gasps> Empathy glasses! Those would have come in handy a second ago, damn it. The Jamrock Biker Cop Sunnies. Plus one empathy, feel the streets. Minus one logic, leave the reason behind. Currently wearing visual calculus ones, yeah. The logic, got some perception. Some empathy, empathy is my, my hard stat, right? Yeah. My logic's not knocking out of the park, though. Right, I have a minus one to logic somewhere. Kind of falling behind on logic these days. A breaker box to power the radio pylon above you. Maybe there's something inside? A little bit of cash. Ahead, decades old concrete defenses. Children play on them now. All that's left. Whoa. Is that going to be the car that we th imagined earlier or a different one? What am I looking at here? A little hard to process. Oh, good, it's like sticking through the eyes or something. Got a banged up fuel canister. A dented stainless steel canister for transporting and storing heavy fuel oil. A logo on its side has been partially stripped over years of use. The government issued red dyed fuel oil inside. It looks like paint, though it smells much, much worse. Is the Jamrock Biker Cop Sunnies for taking your Harmel Row Super Sonic out for a ride on the streets of Jamrock where your heart is buried? What do we got here? What's going on here? Sunken motor carriage. A banged up motor carriage lies half submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the insulin Indian Ocean. Only the cabin top, rear wheels, and the engine remain visible. Remember the tire tracks in Martinez? This is where they were leading. This is where all the tracks were leading to. The be is to be so. The lieutenant has a peculiar look in his eyes as he inspects the wreckage. Let's investigate. I agree. The lieutenant replies. His eyes never leave the sunken vehicle. We should definitely investigate. You get a sudden sinking feeling. Well, yeah, the, 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 this is sinking. <laughs> Stomach acid comes up as you look at the motor carriage in the deep, dark, cold water. Why the doom and gloom? It's just a sunken motor carriage. Some motor carriages are bound to end up in the sea. Run your hand over the cold metal. The motor carriage is properly stuck in the ice. Getting it out would require a team of specialists. A single day in the salty seawater would ruin most vehicles, but this one looks worn even in places the salt water hasn't touched yet. What is the make of this MC? Can I see a logo? The logo is too deep in the murky water. You can't make it out. But you do see a monkfish float by. Yay! 
I, w I want to look at a monkfish. Ew, yeah, the monkfish is that horrible fish. Ah, it's the worst. Yep. Yep, the monkfish are these really flat fish that have way too many teeth and just look generally just, just awful. They're really unfortunate. Uh. How long has it been here? The ice hasn't closed around the vehicle yet. He leans forward to peek into the cold water. My guess is it's been here since last sun Saturday or Sunday. The estimate is correct. The incident probably occurred on Sunday evening. Well, well, well. Looks like Jacob Ear's journey came to an abrupt end here. Your mocking tone finds no response, but the motion of the wa waves. Did you say something, Lieutenant? I did not. He gives you a blank stare. I'd say it has been here since last Saturday or Sunday. What should we do? Let's find... Uh, let's wait for the low tide and see what's inside. Great idea. Then we can get the things inside. The Joyrider must have left something good inside. Guns? Papers? Maybe a cool jacket? A Joyrider jacket? Papers? Papers would be cool. Maybe there's registration inside, like a person registration, you know, like your badges. How long will it take for low tide to come in? I don't know. An hour or two tops. Sit on the swing and wait for the tide to recede, apparently. As you sit down on the old, rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent. Look at them down there, hanging around. He's got a particular side saddle seating situation here. Where he's just holding himself still with his leg. Whereas I'm actually rocking in the swing, like somebody who normally would. The hinges creak under your weight, dangerously so. Nothing but the sound of seagulls, high above in the sky, echoing like distant laughter. Ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. Come on, drama, whistle a tune. The tune on your lips forms a strange, yet undeniably beautiful contrast with the surrounding bleakness. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance. Then, still looking straight ahead, he joins you with a higher-pitched and slightly more melodic trill. Two birds on a wire, whistling by the seaside. Look at the water, and the sunken car. The wind blows. In the distance, behind the church, some vagrants are having an argument over a, a bag of tear they found in the reeds. Further away, a flock of seagulls lands. The clouds pass in the sky. And the shadow of the swing moves like the hour hand of a timepiece. Thirty minutes have passed. Looks like this might take a while. Time to present a good topic of discussion. Would you rather sit on an anthill for an hour or stand in a river of leeches? Ah. Uh. Uh. Was your dad also, you know, point to your eyes? What? Did he wear glasses? Are you are but are you are you making a racist comparison? It's always weird when your character says you know. But you, as the player, are reading it, and you're like, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, hey. It stops at 9, and then just goes says plus at that point. I have so many. Would you rather sit on an anthill for an hour, or stand in a river of leeches? Well. Lieutenant rubs his chin. Historically, leeches have been used to prevent and even cure many ailments. 
Okay, he's thinking. I can do this. Let's do this. Who'd want to sit on an anthill? There's no therapeutic benefits to... Well, nail palm ants, for example, are used in some rites of passage rituals. Clouds on the horizon grow darker, and the shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. You hear the distant rumble of the city. Thirty minutes pass. If you have to side with either the strikers or the shipping company, who would you choose? Luckily, I am already a member of an independent organization, and therefore do not have to choose between a rock and a hard place. But if someone puts a gun to your head, your voice echoes on the water, strange and out of place in this environment. 30 more minutes pass. I didn't get an answer. Why didn't I get an answer? Aw. These time skips. This is a, this is, I'm a little disappointed because this game's full of interesting conversations with people constantly. So I'm like, oh cool, a chance to have like a two hour hangout with Kim where we talk about a bunch of stuff. But it's mostly just time skipping. And even when I ask, when we ask questions, I want to know the answers to. Your voice echoes in the water. Okay. Can you make out the mark now? Detective, I've been able to make out the mark since we arrived. I find it odd you haven't. It's a Capri Model 40. His eyes turn to you. Yes, why haven't you? It's a simple and rugged machine, favored by working men, government of officers. He pauses to think, firefighters, animal control people, you know, those kinds of people. Squint your eyes and say, is that a number on that side? Proceed. Yes, 41. What do you think it stands for? It's as if he knows what it stands for, but wants you to say it. It's pedagogical. Does he know something about the speed racer? Forty-one is his rank in the underground street racing hierarchy. Rub your chin. Small fish, this one. <laughs> it must be Tommy Forty-one, the morning host of FM Forty-one. Looks like the factory made a mistake and accidentally called this one Capri Forty-one. Stupid factory. <laughs> I hate guessing. District something? A precinct? Something municipal? Rub your temples. You're getting a horrible headache. Oh god, no. Uh, it's my car. Yep. Where's the pissing competition? I'm trying to refer... We're 41 and 57, right? I believe I'm 41 and he's 57. Ugh, oh god, no. I'm sorry, Harry. I'm so sorry. Maybe my badge and gun are both in the... Well, the badge was... We already know where the gun went, so no. Well, I don't know where it went, but I know it didn't go here. Maybe my badge is in there. That'd be nice. It's my car. 41. Precinct 41. A massive pit opens up in your stomach, and the most terrible feelings come over you. No. Just nope. Say no to this, Harry. Oh, God, it's mine. I drove my car into the sea? I'm afraid, yes. It looks like you drove your police motor carriage into the sea after you jumped across the canal. I can still fix it. Uh... The badge, the gun, and now this. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and doesn't say anything. 
Maybe I was in pursuit of someone. Of whom? The lieutenant looked skeptical. I don't think so. If anything, you were probably drunk. How do we get it out? Detective, he says almost gently. We don't. A research up, a rescue operation really isn't viable at this point. So it's just gonna be there like that. I'm afraid it will have to be there for like that for many years. He looks around. Look at it. Parts of it might be salvageable, but overall, this machine is a write-off. I can still fix it. That is very unlikely. The lieutenant replies with a sigh. All the electrics are toast. That goes for the electromagnetic steering and brake systems as well. You'd be lucky to find one undamaged component in there. He shakes his head. In a few months, there will be nothing but rust left of this vehicle. It'll be cheaper to buy a new one. Well, not cheaper. This motor carriage costs 50,000 real. But in the long run, it still makes more sense to buy a new machine than to refurbish this. People are going to be angry at me, aren't they? In Precinct 41. Let's face it. This is a substantial loss to your district's budget. He's avoiding your gaze now. I mean, my station only has four other vehicles in addition to my Kanima. This was 20% of the, of the station's vehicular budget? They're not going to take me- They're not going to take me back after this, are they? People are more valuable than machines. He's trying to cheer you up now. Training a police officer is even more costly. I want it to be Jacob Ear, not me. Well, it isn't. It's you. I'm very sorry. Things were going so well. We were just whistling merrily. You can still whistle. The lieutenant says with a smile. Besides, the night is always darkest before the dawn. Well, at least I can see what's inside there now. Please have my badge. Just give me one of the things, please. Yes, let's take a look. Go to inventory and interact with the item by clicking interact. What item? Wait, what item am I, am I interacting with? What? Footprints in the snow. They lead away from the accident. Seems the walker was either very confused or drunk out of his mind. Oh, stop reminding me. <laughs> A bottle, drained of all its booze, is frozen in the ice. This is it, the scene of the party. The fire pit, cigarettes, and empty bottles all evidence it. Yeah, sure does look like a lot of folks partied here. Looks like they were here a while, judging from all the bottles. The sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point, like a goose ice sculpture or a chocolate fountain. Hey Kim, looks like we had a couple of party goers here. Looks like it. This was some kind of theater to them, a circus production by a great clown. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and nods. Hey, let's keep moving, detective. Money! At least there's that, I guess. Hey! My badge and my jacket. The ice just off the coast crackles, shifting. RCM Commander's Jacket. Which category? That category. Alright. Plus one E, plus one S. Plus one E, plus one V! Visual Calculus Stat. Oh. RCM Commander's Jacket. A black uniform jacket with RCM's signature white triangle on its right sleeve and backside. 
Letters inside the collar read LTN 2JFR. The jacket is of exceptional quality other than some minor wear and tear. The visual calculus at the cost of a, of a, of a shivers. Yeah, visual calculus is one of my stats that have fall, has fallen behind a little bit now. It kind of almost fits even. I suppose. These options for shirts. Here we go. Dubois. Yep, that's my face that never stops smiling. I had a cleaner haircut that day. Thick blue piece of acrylic covering a thin leaf of paper with the officer's name and rank on it. Next to the writing you see a man stare back at you. A younger version of you, already disintegrating inside but still presentable to the outside. <laughs> what a self-description. Already disintegrating inside. A police badge on which you see the photo of a man. You. Some seaweed is stuck to the back. Found my badge. At least something good came out of all this. The lieutenant glances at the badge in your hands. Study the badge. Encased between two durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of a street grid of Rivercall West. You see a photo, a name, a rank, a document number, the date of issue, and in the lower right corner, your precinct. Look at the photo. The man keeps winking at you with his green-gray eyes. This, fo this photo's old, no doubt about that. But the badge is new. You used an old photo for a new badge. How old? Eight, maybe ten years. The guy in the picture is rather good looking. He's got a nice haircut and a distinct, distinctly lacking in massive sideburns. And he's winking, why? Why do you think? His face is already contorted by the expression, although it looks less grotesque on him than it does on you now. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it as and, and a shining watermark. Name, Harrier Dubois. Harrier. That's long for Harry, so you are Harry. He thinks. Everett was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him you're Harry Dubois didn't. Wait, what kind of name is Harrier? It's a wartime name. Revolutionary. The kind mothers give their sons during troubled times, like Undying, or Boxer, or Ironhide. Oopsie. Ah! No! A name like Armor. I just accidentally refused the name. I said, but I don't want to be Harry Dubois. Don't accept it. Shit. Why? It's a cool name. I like it. He shrugs. Besides, you're Harry anyway. No one's ever called Harrier. What did I just do? Did I just break the story? Did I just accidentally make a choice? Shit. I didn't mean to do that. It was a weird, like, twitchy double click moment. Shit. Uh, how long ago was my last autosave? <sighs> That's bad. Yeah. Uh, do I just accept that? I have to start the entire episode over. Fuck. What a bummer.
Eh. My character not liking his name isn't that... isn't gonna ruin me. Oh, I can still accept it, never mind. Okay, huh. <laughs> Uh, emergency over. <laughs> Whatever emergency it was. This doesn't seem like the most important detail. Strange doesn't say Raphael Ambrosius Casto. Not strange at all. Your name is Herio Dubois. Like it says in your police badge. Herio Dubois it is then. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Herio Dubois. Yeah, if he likes it, then I like it. I'm trying to get along with my partner, who has to deal with so much. Jesus Christ, he has to deal with so much. Rank LTN to JFR. Lieutenant Double Yefreto. What's a Lieutenant Double Yefreto? The Lieutenant is a rank above Sergeant and below Captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I am a lieutenant. And double your freighter? The title of a your freighter is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to a higher rank. In your case, Captain. The lieutenant explains, you have declined twice, thus you're double your freighter. They rank in your name how many times you've, dec you've personally declined a promotion? That's interesting. Declined. There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you is in your precinct's decomptage might be taken. Or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. And sometimes, he continues, they just prefer the type of police work available at to their current rank. In your case, Lieutenant. What's a decomptage? Decomptage is the hierarchical system employed by the River Coast Citizens Militia. It means counting down to twos. The countdown is modeled after the dual leadership system employed by the left during the revolution, which in turn was developed by last century experimental psychologists in the University of Koningstein. Which is a very German word, or Germanic at least. Koeningstan. Koenisch. Yeah. Because a G at the end of a word is more like is more likely to be to pronounced uh, Koenig. Koenigstein. Or something. I don't know. It's been so long. A Koenig has its own mean, meaning. Ah. Oh wait, no, that's the wrong thing. King, that's what I thought. Right. It's like being called Kingsville. <laughs> the University of King Kingsleyton. The lowest rank is junior officer. Usually teenagers. Then there are the patrol officers. Then sergeants. Lieutenant, and then the captain. That's basically it, except for a few kinks. What kinks? Kinks like satellite officers and the additional Yefreto rank I already explained. Satellite officers? You are given the title of satellite officer if your partner is quickly promoted through the ranks and you rise with him. You don't seem to be a satellite. So you've been putting up with all my bullshit because I'm your superior. Or we're of the same rank. Don't men yeah, don't mention it. Thanks for explaining all this. My pleasure. Thought my rank was drunk. Yes, apparently you've had a rather successful career in the past and he pauses to examine you. This leads me to believe maybe your current situation is only temporary. Thanks. Gives me hope. Good. He says with a quick smile.
Such a small yet precious thing. Expensive paper caught between thick plastic, like a fly in amber. It reads, Serial. REV 126205JAM41. That's just the serial number. Rivercal Jamrock Precinct 41. With some numbers thrown in there for good measure. The numbers are not there for good measure. They have an administrative purpose, one that's unfortunately been erased from your memory. Date of issue, 7th of November, 54 months ago. I'm guessing that's when you were promoted to the rank of Lieutenant W. Freto. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. You seem to have been doing well then. You're pretty sure you weren't doing well, but better? Probably yes. Precinct 41. Yes, it's the designation of your precinct, 41. Like mine says 57. The 57th is mostly industrial harbor. Lots of asphalt. The 41 first is... He stops. What? It's a tough station to work in. You have all of Jamrock to cover. That district should have three precincts, but money is what it is. But then again... A faint smile. It's a legendary district. And a hell of a station, too. It must be an honor and a curse to work with people like Price, McCoy, Bildjeva. Roberts, Feuerbach, Demeter. Suddenly names from your decomptage flash to your forebrain. He knew all those people, although they're not from his, his station. <laughs> they must be big. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it and a shining watermark. Put the badge away. Well, we're slowly piecing together at least some of our damn memory. We have the badge. For what good it does in me. Wait. No. That's exactly what we need. I'll look around the area a little bit, but yeah, right. That we we specifically need the badge for Joyce. I don't know if I need the gun for anything besides, you know, being a competent officer who has their gun and isn't having it wander around in public. There's a boat tucked away underneath the, the tower pull in cover. Great news. The boat's big enough for a grown man like you to fit underneath it in supine position. Wait. Great news, I found somewhere new to sleep. Huh? I can pretty much finish the case from under that boat there. It's dry, waterproof, and free of charge. Sarcastic self-pity is not what we need at the moment, officer. I understand the situation looks grim, but we must continue with our investigation. Think of it as a salvation. You have a home somewhere. All cops do. When this is done, you can return. Yeah, so far I'm able to pay my rent, but I think my option before might have been that bench. It kept getting highlighted like it was interactive, but, he, but Kim didn't want to sit down on it. I think it was an option to sit there, uh, asleep there, if I couldn't afford my night. But I've afforded it so far. Oop, hello. Money. We have plenty we have plenty to do in that direction. But for now, let's deal with the fact that I have my badge. So we immediately have gained one of the things that I needed so badly to continue. Book it, 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 book it. And also, when I take these items out, one of my stats... I don't know. If I put those items away, one of my stats gets better. I don't remember which one it is anymore. But you... Give me... Oh! Empathy! Shit. I should have had that equipped during my empathy checks. All three of them. Damn it. Maybe I did? I don't remember.
the warded door and the barbell padlock door the padlock door over there why is it even on my list hmm a lot of these checks I actually don't want to do set of tracks visual calculus medium those on a wider available try now didn't I already finish the visual calculus of the tracks? Is it different tracks? I thought it was the one at the case. Hmm. <clears throat> anyway. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? I found my badge, by the way. By love, you did. She inspects the piece of blue plastic. Her eyes scanning from left to right. Fast, observantly, like an, like an electronic plate printer. She hands it back to you. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant. Double your freighter, Du Bois. I am glad to see a man of high qualification. The situation is precious. Seaweed drips from the badge in your hand. It smells of fish. Seaweed? How is seaweed still even on it? What can I help you with, you, Lieutenant Euphrater? How about you share your information on the lynching, now that we've seen his badge? The goalposts have moved, Lieutenant. In the absence of the badge, I have informed my employer that there will be a probe. I cannot rescind my, that promise. She smiles apologetically. To my knowledge, the drivers are still at the roundabout. I will tell you everything I know when you finish with them. This was your plan all along. She shakes her head vigorously. My plan is to share information. The only way to do that now is by telling my employers you've kept your end. Which I hope you will, because let me tell you, we are in dire waters. Meaning the information she has will raise the stakes in this game. The sooner the probe is finished, the sooner I can share crucial information with you. She takes a sip of tea. Of tea. Bleh, bleh, bleh. She takes a sip of tea. Now, is there anything I can do for you in the meantime? Tea, perhaps. Motherfucker. The whole reason I needed my wanted to get my card isn't even helpful here. Uh. Meanwhile, empathy isn't even what I'm here for. Let's see. Because the racist driver... ...is Half-Light. Legendary. I'm just, like, not prepped for that right now. There are so many checks that it's actually hard to keep track of some of these. Yeah, my skill cap is reached for half lights, so like... I'm not sure how to get that check to happen again. What is this volition check for? You're back. Good. What can I help you with? It appears we're being monitored every step we take, colleague. Lieutenant shrugs. Did we have any other business here? So I've been dealing with Everard again. Hmm. She nods with well-contained curiosity. She's not even asking you anything. It's so easy to just say.
I don't know. I actually don't know what that volition check is. That I'm apparently trapped on. Hmm. Cindy's infected my mind, but not well enough. Hmm. Uh, at this point, I might keep some of these skill points around because then I can toggle up a white check to try it again. Trying to get into the system of like how this whole thing works. I don't know, should I just go keep going deeper or do I just force him to do it? I can't. The issue is like I, uh, the Lord Driver is half light. Yeah, it's for threatening people. I don't know, threatening people is not really what I want to do. Do I want to get better at that? Probably not. So given a lack of options, I've got to force him to let me to tell me what to do next. Or I've got to find her myself, I suppose. If I can find the female driver myself, then I guess I don't have to force him. I gotta probe a little deeper. I don't know. I like that character, so that choice is just kind of a bummer. But I'm really not seeing a lot of options to not, not a lot of alternatives, but hey, I can look into finding that that lady's husband in the meantime. Someone's broken down the fence and the barbed wire. The wind is corralled by the four story buildings around this yard. Glory, says the Graffito, to the ghosts of us. Someone has left their music collection beneath the tarpaulin. The smallest church in St. Saiyans. Ooh. Ooh, I may have found my sad music. The tape you found from a shack on the coast. The A side has the smallest church of St. Saiyans written on it. While the B-side is supposed to contain the instrumental version, requires a boombox to play. There's no way to listen to the tape without a working tape player or a port -a reel at hand. A port -a reel A portable tape player? A pawn shop. A pawn shop would have a tape player. I'm guessing the one in my uh, in my room doesn't work anymore. I wasn't sh I don't remember I wasn't sure in my memory about whether or not it was Nah. Birds in the birch tree. Barely audible coos from above. I wasn't sure if the one in my room was broken or if it was just the tape. The swing is missing. No one's been here for a long time. Rust peels off the bent iron post of the swing. The wind rustles through the skeleton of the small house behind you. There's desolation. Everywhere. What happened here? In this yard? The lieutenant looks at the small building. A flock of gray swallows takes off in the distance. He's assessing the situation. How long ago it was abandoned. Someone thought they could have a summer house in a block obscure for cheap. It didn't work out. They abandoned it about a decade ago. Wait, what's a block obscure? A black block. A part of the city left unrenovated after the war. Or one that has fallen to gang violence. Or or has become inhospitable in some other way. On aerial photos, block obscures look like dark squares, hence the name. So this part of the coast is a block obscure. Practically. 
It's not an official term in it anyway, but he spreads his arms. Look around. No sewage, broken power lines, crime, drunks. Life is tough in the blocks. It's no place to build a summer home. Well, at least they left some old music behind. Yes. And you picked it up as part of the jam rock shuffle. It gives you a weary smile. It's not meant as nagging, just an observation. We should move. I don't think we will solve the murder with forays into the urban hinterland. At least in this play in this phase of the investigation. Got my record though. Can I even walk this way? Not particularly. The tree is like a cutoff point, essentially. Yep. Cause that's just me yep. That's this that's here. I'm here. The halfway halfway point of the map essentially. The fisherman's shacks are next. So I've been there. There's, there's where my car landed. That's where I am now. That's the house I approached a little bit. So we're, get, we're getting there. This area is pretty open. It's the in-between zone. Between probably more populated zones. Through the broken glass, dusty shelves, and a forgotten chair. Anyone home? Well, that's oddly off putting. Oop. A cold breeze is enough to make the wall planks creak. You see a dark red chair in the dim light of the room. A bow knot. And another postcard for the collection. This postcard depicts a forest of smokestacks releasing fat plumes of smoke into blue cloudless sky. The tinge of age, the color of old teeth, gives it a sickly look. Written on the back is a single sentence repeated twice. I got out. I got out. No addressee. The bow knot. Where's that quip? Oh, my neck. Right. I don't think I've had any other options for that yet. My tie gives me one inland empire, and the bow knot gives me two drama. Oh. That is kind of a better stat for me, isn't it? Inland empire is so minor. The drama is one of my good ones. But it doesn't like a bow tie. Theater kid. You're sure that wearing this tie is a statement. You're not sure what kind of statement, though. Statement of, I want more drama stat. How about that? I wonder how many people pick all their clo their clothes based on stats and which ones pick them based on making an aesthetic. Because admittedly, the fashion souls is real here. <laughs> like, this is definitely like a series of items that have very different appearance uh, effects on your appearance. And you could you get very different results based on what you want to go for here. I'm I'm slowly getting more and more looking like I'm slowly looking more and more like an actual cop. <laughs> It's really just the shirt that's weird at this point. I mean, maybe, maybe not a cop that I would expect to see in real life, but some sort of weird TV disco cop, which is what I kind of am. The shoes are very odd. Sounds of life in the north, a washboard scrums filth and fabric. I got sleeping inside of a pipe. At my home. The bushes are too thick and thorny to pass through. Cinder blocks. Charred. A makeshift fire pit with magazines for lighting. 
I think this is the homeless slum, essentially. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overtly comforting. Hmm. The lieutenant looks down the street. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. Yep. Another way to pass time when he's not around. There's a lot of those. Good old magnesium. I'm good at finding that. Can I even get over there? Looks like he's gonna walk around the entire building. Yeah. Alright, we'll get there when we get there then. Inter Isolary Trousers. Plus one to Kingdom of Conscience Moralist Pants? Moralist Pants. Tailored trousers and light brown. Moderate in every aspect. They're absolutely unremarkable. In other words, perfect. Ugh. What is Kingdom of Conscience? It's clearly some kind of... Is there a stat for Moralist? Does it give you plus one Moralist stat? You see dust-covered linens, dried tulips on a bed. Looks like this is an overlooked dead end. Oh, he went all the way around, so I'm wrong. The underside of the boat has recently been tarred. I feel like we just earned- we just learned something interesting, didn't we? If I click on somewhere, Kim actually paths to the location I click on in some way, I think. Yeah. I kind of thought he was doing some like World of Warcraft style follow command where he follows my character around and the AI just figures out where to go based on me. But no, I'm pretty sure that when I click places, it... Huh, haven't seen the RCM around for ages. We'll get to you. But I, I think what's going on here is that you click places and then it basically... It shows me the place where my character is going to go, this little reticle. And a second invisible reticle is also assigned in that moment, and that's where Kim paths to. Much like in, like, Pillars of Eternity when you have a party of characters. The distinction's not that important, but... I just noticed that when I was here-ish, I clicked over here, and my character went that way, and Kim's character went around that way. Which, if he was following me, he would never do that. But if he's pathing to wherever I click... Like, an, like a party member in a CRPG, then suddenly it makes more sense that he would take a really weird path. Because we, we were, our slightly different standing positions had different optimum routes to take. Wide curtains have been drawn shut. No one, no looking in. A wedding stone, well worn and covered in rust. I mean, I'm just stealing your recycling. What are these doing in, in the fish? Thought you guys forgot this place even exists. What? Franconier in cavalry boots. Plus one perception? Hmm. Composure is pretty useful. My perception's doing pretty alright. I could stick with my composure, I think. The view from above. Good old calf-length cavalry boots. Mount that horse and ride into the night. The heel comes in handy, too. It definitely makes some good five makes you some good five centimeters taller. But could it be that it's also making you sharper? More perceptive to your surroundings now that you've gained a new perspective? Oh, Captain, my captain. The planks creak beneath your weight. Please don't drop me in the water. The boat's floating freely in the water, unmoored. The ladder leads to a school of fish swimming in the kelp. Hmm. Well, hello, local. That probably is not happy to see me, because no one ever usually is. Aye, officer. 
Lillian, the net picker. A woman in a raincoat stands on the quay, considering an overturned boat. A sword in a scabbard hangs on her hip. Anything I can help you with? That depends. Where are we exactly? A fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Elisable. Why? The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Has been since they built this place. The wind rattles her earrings. They call it Elisable because of the legible sign. Huh. I have questions. The first is, what's your name? The name is Lillian. People call me Netpicker. I think I have time for questions, and that was actually the second one. Indeed. You're always confused as to your whereabouts. I'm looking for someone. Maybe you can help. Let's see. She tilts her head ever so slightly. Who are you looking for? I'm looking for missing cryptozoologists. Ugh. She frowns, thinking, I don't think I know what those are. Care to elaborate? Uh, people who look for animals who are hard to find. Aha! Uh -huh. She exclaims, like snowmen. Snowmen? I haven't heard about those. Two odd guys have been wandering around here, nose in sand, talking nonsense about snowmen and the like. Wait, the like? Right, she nods. Not only snowmen, also green men, monkey men, burning rhinos, you get the picture. Oh, you're getting it, and it is gorgeous. Where'd they go? I don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. She points north. Who else are you looking for besides snowmen? That's it. I'm not looking for anyone else right now. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? Nice sword. Does that come with a story? Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of a story. She smiles at her own joke. It's to intimidate folks, mostly. It is imposing. It's a regular mass-produced sword. Like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy. Just for intimidation. Why do you need in, in, why do you need to intimidate? Or why do you need intimidation tactics? From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men, and believe me, she adds, tithering. Men need a lesson in manners from time to time. Why don't more women arm themselves if it's so effective? What makes you think we haven't? She smiles. <laughs> the truth is almost anyone in this life is scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that. That goes for men too. But they put on an act for us, pretend like everything's good and living in shit doesn't bother them. Like anyone falls for that. Behold. Point to the expression on your face. Her eyes meet yours, and suddenly she starts laughing. It's hoarse, as if she hasn't laughed for a while. You like it? Sure. Her face straightens. It looks as, as if you could face down any horror in the world with that same unchanging grin. It's like a shield. The traces of her laughter are still there, in her eyes, fading fast. So where are all the men now? Some went to patch their wounds. Their lesson learned. Others are more thick-headed. She looks down. And one of them, I ended up marrying. Where's your husband now? Gone. The harbor seawall endures the wave of the fr the wash of the freezing waters. Many things wash up against it and onto the beaches of Rivercall. Some inanimate. Some, just no longer alive. You shudder.
Gone where? To the waves. Her eyes stop in yours. The sea took him. It was a long time ago. Oh. Say no more. Wait for her to continue. He didn't respect the sea. Went out there drunk like a skunk. And sure enough, one day, the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Now before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning one can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. You should have thrown yourself in the waves after him. Nod sagely. Jesus. Yeah, death's nothing. I shit on death. Time really is the best cure for sorrow, isn't it? Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bed sick with melancholy. She crosses her arms. I buried him. Mourned for an appropriate amount of time. And went on. He glances at the village where two little kids are playing with what look like rocks. Life didn't really change life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. This is neither a touchy nor very interesting topic for her. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another better drunk. Ask her. Both of you could use some action. Heroic Jesus. She needs to go on a date with another drunk, badly. One, my suggestion stat's only one. Next, Kim's presence makes it awkward, so if I do it around Kim, you get a minus one. But also, I don't have a place to go on a date in, so I get a minus six. So I currently have a negative six, which is not great. And I have a heroic stat of, I have a heroic 15 to uncover, so it's not a great chance to get in general. Wow. A plus me over here. What do you do around here? Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves. Take care of the kids. Pick nets. Right now I'm towing a little skiff. What else? I sell all the fish to people in the Delta to serve their fancy restaurants. Authentic and Indian cuisine. Is that enough to make a living? Sometimes I walk the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. Keep it professional, man. Don't make it so don't make it sound like you're hitting on her. Interesting. What have you found? Wood, pieces of glass. Every once in a while we see dead bodies, human, animal, fish, other odd sea creatures. A mime. A mine washed ashore once. I thought she said a mime. I'm like, excuse me? She looks at the beach and continues. Bottles, drugs also. Lost cargo in general. But most of the time, it's just wood and glass. Alright. Major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. Oh, um, a landmine. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck do you mean a mine washed up? Those are really non-mobile things. You know, the caves you get rocks out of and all that. <laughs> it's literally, it took a moment for me to, to recenter on like mine as in like a landmine explosive. Jesus Christ. That's dangerous. Well, I need to know about those human bodies. Well, you're barking under the wrong tree then, officer. She shakes her head. I have no interest in floaters. Seen enough of them in my life already. A very unattractive bunch. So I take it that's your skiff? Point at the overturned boat. Sure is. The sun, I call her. Coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time for it to dry, assuming the sunny days come. 
be seeing you. Ah. Is that the overturned boat that I was thinking of sleeping under? Whoops. That could have gone a bit more awkwardly.